The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Jerusalem, one of the oldest cities in the world, considered holy by three major religions. This city where Jesus walked, taught, was crucified, buried, and rose again was the origin that started a movement 2,000 years ago. And that spark of revival continues today through the Celebration Center, a new building project that will be in the heart of Jerusalem, a safe and secure place to worship for new messianic multicultural communities. Imagine the name of Jesus returning to the nation of Israel. And really, that's ultimately what this is about, that the people of God will come into a, a fuller revelation of who their Messiah is and come into that place where they worship. And we're calling this the Celebration Center for a reason, because this is a place of worship. In that city, the prophecies are being fulfilled through ministries like this. And, uh, and I want to be a part of that revival. I believe that there is a blessing that comes on people when they begin to partner and bless the nation of Israel. Let's spark revival and see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we support the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. I'm coming to you today from the beautiful city of Jerusalem. Specifically, I'm in the Garden of Gethsemane, the place where we read that so much occurred here and uh, our life was changed because of a prayer meeting that took place here where Jesus wrestled with the will of the Father, just like all of us do. You know, it's so hard sometimes to find the will of God. We, we sometimes want God to drop the whole plan of His perfect will on our life, and rarely does He do that. But He does say in Psalms 37, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. God rarely will give you the whole plan, but He will give you step by step His plan. And I believe as you listen to this telecast today, God's going to give you the next step. I believe that it's time for you to move into your future and into the plan that God has for you. And there's the proceeding word of God. You know, when Abraham raised the knife to sacrifice his son Isaac on that hill that you can see behind me, when he raised that knife, um, he was obeying the word of the Lord. God told him to do that. And he was going to stab his son. And he heard the proceeding word, a new word, a fresh word. God said, stay your hand. And he stopped. What if he hadn't heard the proceeding word of God? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, listen to it, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, you don't need to proceed until you get the word from God on what direction to go. And I'm believing today that while I'm teaching you from the Garden of Gethsemane, that the Lord will give you the next step, that proceeding word of God. He has a plan for this season of your life. And I want to just read it. Sometimes we just need to hear it from the Scripture. But in this place where I stand today, this is what happened. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and the disciples also followed him. So when it says he was accustomed, it means this was his prayer place. This is where he came on a regular basis. Jesus would find one of these olive trees or one of these old trees. And there's a lot of olive trees and different trees all around me. And he would find, often you read, before day, he would slip away. Often you read, he would pull away from the crowd. So it teaches us something. Number one, that we need a place of prayer. And number two, we need a time of prayer. You will not pray if you don't have a place of prayer and a time of prayer. The Lord really taught me this many, many years ago when uh, I first started pastoring Free Chapel and Sharice, my wife, and I were having children. We had three at the time, and I was so busy. I was so busy building the church. The church was growing, and we were in a building program that I was just going to the Bible to get a sermon, and I really didn't have, I was praying, but not like I, not consistently. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I want you to find a place of prayer and a time of prayer. And this was over 20 years ago. And I began to go to a place in Gainesville where I live. And every day of my life, after I take my kids to school, 
I would go to my place of prayer at my time of prayer. And I would walk. I like to walk in the woods there in Georgia. We've got all kinds of woods and I've got trails. And that's my place of prayer. I even have trees that um, at different challenges and different crises that were going on in our family or in the church. I took stones or I took a knife with me and I cut into the tree and I made a mark and would say, Lord, I'm going to come by and every day I walk by this tree and I mark this tree. I want you to remember I'm praying for my child or I'm praying for this church or I'm believing you for that building program. I'm believing you for that building. And to this day, I was there Saturday before I came here. I can walk through those trails and I can show you the marks of prayer that I would put on those trees just as a little memorial to say, God, you know, the Bible said of Cornelius, his prayers came up before God as a memorial. <laughs> Did you know you can stack prayers up and like the memorials in Washington, the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial. Can you imagine your memorial of prayer coming up before the throne of God? And as it was his custom to do, Jesus came to this place, the Garden of Gethsemane. You can see the Eastern Wall, the beautiful uh, center there of the city and the Dome of the Rock behind me where the temple once stood. And he, would, he loved this area. He loved this place and he would come pray here. And if you ever come and we're coming next year and I hope you will, we'll have a prayer meeting right here in the Garden of Gethsemane. But if you ever come, you, you will be touched by this place. This is very, very special. And I'm going to pray for you and your family from the Garden of Gethsemane in just a moment on this telecast. And when he came to the place, listen to that, the place. Do you have a place? Find a place of prayer. Get a place of prayer. Have a time of prayer. It's that important. And the scripture said, he said, uh, pray that you enter not into temptation. Jesus said this to his disciples. And when he had withdrawn himself about a, thro a th stone's throw away, he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Listen, then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly until his sweat became like drops of blood falling down onto the ground. And I guess it's emotional to me because I'm here where it happened. You know, we read these stories in America and around the world and, you know, we have, but when you come and you stand here, he came to a place and an angel came and ministered to him and his sweat became in such agony, his sweat became like drops of blood. Sometimes you have to sweat it out. Sometimes the Christian walk is not easy. Sometimes it's tearful. Sometimes it's, you sweat it out. And Jesus, the Son of God, his, his sweat became like drops of blood and it fell into the ground. This ground, uh, these rocks could have heard him pray and could have been touched by the, that was actually the first shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ for the world. We think of it being on the cross but it was not on the cross where he shed his first drops of blood. His first drops of blood were shed the night before he was crucified in this garden. The blood of atonement did not start on Calvary. It started in the garden of Gethsemane where his sweat, and by the way, sweat was part of the curse. You remember what he told uh, Adam? He said, by the sweat of your brow, because you've eaten of the forbidden fruit, by the sweat of your brow, you will, you will ha have to work and produce for the rest of your life. And the earth will give up thorns. Listen to this. So Jesus, when his sweat became like drops of blood, was breaking the curse, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. In the gar it all started in a garden, the Garden of Eden. And it was defeated in a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, when his sweat which represents, again, sweat was part of the curse. God told Adam, because of this, the sweat of the brow, everything will come. You're going to have trials and tribulations, and you'll labor by the sweat of your brow. But Jesus said, you won't have to work for salvation anymore. I'm going to take the sins of the world 
and what you've tried to work and make happen by offering sacrifices for hundreds and thousands of years, offering sacrifices, I'll do it through my blood. I'll shed my blood and it's not do, do, do. It's done, done, done. It is finished. And the blood of Jesus Christ makes us righteous, takes the shame, the guilt away, and it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It takes the curse of sin from our life. And his, listen to that, his, his sweat became as drops of blood in agony. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And then he rose up from prayer and came to his disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Could you not tarry with me one hour? And he was teaching his disciples about prayer. You know, the, the other thing that stands out in that text to me is something about angels. The Bible said that as he prayed in this garden, an angel came and strengthened him and ministered unto him. And uh, the greatest tragedy of prayerlessness is the unemployment of angels. When we don't pray, angels are not employed. Paul prayed in a storm and an angel came and delivered him. Daniel play, prayed in a lion's den and an angel came. Peter prayed in a prison and an angel came and led him out. The greatest tragedy of prayerlessness is the unemployment of angels. Wonder how many of our angels are standing in the unemployment line in heaven because we don't pray. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And when Jesus prayed in the garden, he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. As a matter of fact, he prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. It's one of those moments where we see the humanity of Jesus, where he is vulnerable, where he's wrestling with do I really matter? Do I really have to do this? Do I really have to suffer on the cross? Am I really going to go through with this? And he said, Lord, take this cup from me. There is a this cup experience. And if you drink from that cup, you'll wear the crown, but you can't have the crown without the cup. Many times we want a painless Christianity. And some of you are drinking from the cup right now. Jesus himself had to drink from the cup. And the measure of your trial is the measure of God's trust in your life. The greater the trial, the greater the trust. And Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. I'm telling you that when you get to that place, there, I remember when the Lord called me to preach. And um, I was majoring in music. I was on a full scholarship. I play saxophone and I love music. And I was in my second year of college and and. I felt an uneasiness. I felt like God had more. And I'm talking to some of you right now that God is going to give you the next step. He's going to give you His will for your life. Jesus prayed in this garden for the will of God. And I'm going to pray in a moment for you that God will give you the next step to His plan and His will for your life. But I remember, you know, just having an uneasiness like, something is missing. And I began to earnestly pray and fasted for three days. And the Spirit of God began to deal with me in such a strong way. And I felt the call to preach. But it was, a, it was I had to sweat it out. You know, Jesus, sweat became like blood. You have to sweat out the will of God. It's not an easy thing. You just wake up and you're in the will of God. You have to sweat it out. You have to stay steadfast. You have to trust God. You have to obey when it seems like nobody's noticing. You have to do what God says do when nothing's happening. It's wonderful when huge doors are opening and big things are happening, but that's not that. See, we, all we care about is the destination, but God wants to, it's the journey. It's who we're becoming. And as I begin to sweat it out and when God called me to preach, you know, there's nothing like being in his will. And I look today and here I am in Jerusalem preaching to you. I never would have dreamed that that would take me where I, all the places that God has allowed me to go. But when you pray, not my will. And I remember I had to get to that place where I said, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. 
That's when something breaks. That's when heaven opens up. As long as you're fighting, as long as you're saying, I'll do it but, or, uh, you know, if it works out like I really want, every relationship you have to lay on the altar and say, not my will, but thine be done. When I, when I was going to, uh, you know, marry my wife, Sharice, I had to, I had to reach that point that I said, not my will. If you tell me I'll walk away, or if you tell me, Lord, I really want to marry her, but, but, but I only want your will. I'm telling you, we need to pray that prayer more. We, we do too many things without prayer. Pray about that house that you're thinking about buying. Pray about that person that you're getting involved with. Pray. Pray about uh, the, 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 the business that you're in. Pray about it. Talk to the Lord about it and say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. When you do, you invoke the power of heaven. And, you know, when you get to that place that you say, not my will, but thine be done, that's when the, an the, the answer will come. That's when something inside of you truly is willing to do the will of God. And the will of God for you is the greatest and safest place to live. I'd rather be in the will of God in Iraq surrounded by ISIS than at Disneyland out of the will of God. Because the safest place in the world for you, if God's will for you is to be in a place, He'll give you the grace, the protection, the provision, all that you need. And I feel like saying to somebody, when you get in the will of God, the provision will come. When you get in the will of God, the power of God, the unction of God will come. And I'm going to pray for you today. I'm going to pray that God will invoke His will over your life. And, you know, this place where Jesus prayed, I just believe that power can flow from where I am to where you are. Many of you are at a, um, many of you are at a transition, and I sense it. You're, you're in a transition season, and you're wondering, Lord, what's the next step? The steps of a good man, a righteous man, not by your own righteousness, the blood of Jesus, are ordered of the Lord. He's already got your life planned out. He's already got the person for you that you're going to marry. He's already got, if you're married, he's already got plans, five years, ten years. The Bible said he establishes the, 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 the beginning from the end. In other words, God finishes it, and then he goes all the way back and starts. <laughs> and listen to this. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you this. He'll never, he'll never waste a step. Even the bad steps and choices that we've made, God won't waste it. He'll take that step and He'll mold you and He'll make you tender. And it may have broken you. It may have been a terrible step that you made that was out of the will of God, but God never wastes a step. Even the mistakes that we make, He can take and He can somehow make us tender and make us compassionate and make us... He can actually turn the bad steps into, into worship in our life that makes us, you know, when we think about how God delivered us from that bad step, it turns us to praise and turns us to worship and glorify God like never before. God will never waste a step in your life, even your mistakes. He says, come back to me. I'll cleanse you. I'll forgive you. I'll heal you and I'll use you. And I want to pray for you right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment. It's His will for you to confess Him and to receive Him as your Savior. Pray this prayer right where you are right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I receive you today as my Savior. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane all the way to Calvary, it cleanses me and it forgives me. Now say this, and Lord, I want your will. I pray for your will today in my life. Thy will be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We would love to hear from you. You are forgiven. And I just feel led because I don't get to come to Jerusalem every day. And I just feel led to pray for our partners and friends and all of our viewers. Um, when we come, and we, we're coming next year, by the way, bringing a large group over here, and I'll, my family and I, we all just get on the buses and hang out with the people and eat and just have the most wonderful time getting to know our, our, our friends. And, and we'll come to this Garden of Gethsemane. It's one of the favorite things that I do because 
we'll pray the Lord's Prayer here together. I usually try to rent it out for about an hour, and we have a prayer meeting and communion in the Garden of Gethsemane with, with our people. And I want to pray for you, and I want to pray the Lord's Prayer, and I want to take the next few moments and just pray for the sick, pray for the suffering, pray for those of you who feel alone and abandoned. Maybe you're going through a divorce. It feels like your life is broken. Maybe, maybe you started out and something has happened and it shattered your dreams. I believe God has your next step. Just hold on to his promise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just right now pray for those who are sick. I pray for those who are suffering. I pray for those who need direction. I pray for those who are in financial difficulty. You are the God who supplies all of our needs. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of signs and wonders and healings. And we declare your great name. The name of Jesus is greater than cancer. It's greater than heart disease. It's greater than leukemia. It's greater than AIDS. And Lord, manifest your power right now. I know that standing in Jerusalem right now, you can send forth healing power into every home, into every family. And I ask you for miracles today on behalf of your people, those that need help in their family, those that need help in their marriage, those that need help, Lord, I hold up their children that are enslaved and addicted to drugs and alcoholism. We get so many letters, so many emails from people who are broken and hurting. And God, I just pray for those thousands of people that have asked us to pray that you would release miracles and angels. Send your angels, Lord, just like you sent an angel to Jesus. Release the angels to fight on behalf of God's people. Those who are in a battle, turn the battle, I pray. I plead the blood of Jesus over you and your family and your future and your finances and your health. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, our time is almost gone. Thank you so much for your amazing support. For those of you who are helping us build the Celebration Center right here in Jerusalem, it's a place that will house nine different congregations speaking and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in nine different languages, especially in Hebrew, to this beautiful people here, the Jewish people, and uh, also Ethiopian congregation, a Russian congregation, on and on nations of the world represented in the Celebration Center. We're partnering with our friends at King of Kings Church, which is an amazing ministry doing great things. And I want to thank you for helping us. We're getting close to the completion of that project. We need your help. Let's get it done. Let's finish it. We're so close. And I want to thank you. Maybe you haven't done anything yet. Many of you have given $1,000, some even more, to make this miracle happen. And we so appreciate it. We're so close to seeing it done. Will you help us today? If you will, I know God will bless you. It'll come up as a memorial, I believe, for you and your family before the throne of God. What, he said in Genesis 13 that when you bless Israel, he said, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. I believe a blessing is coming your way when you help make the gospel come to the city of Jerusalem. Thank you and God bless you. Now more than ever, Jensen Franklin and Kingdom Connection partners around the globe are helping spread the good news that Jesus is coming again. And we are believing for a revival to be sparked in the very heart of Israel through the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. You can be a part of helping the Jewish people receive the Messiah and open the doors of worldwide revival when you sow your best gift into the ministry this month. When you send a gift of $30 or more, you may request Jensen Franklin's brand new book, Why the Holy Spirit. In this teaching, you will learn through scripture about the role of the Holy Spirit in your life. If God is calling you to make a difference for His people in a greater way, with a gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you our Celebration Center Kit, which includes Why the Holy Spirit, along with a special gift selected just for you, a beautiful Jerusalem stone gift commemorating your support of Israel through the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. God is calling you to be a part of His outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all nations. Call now and spark revival around the world by giving today. Life 
is real. Vivid, alive, beating, breathing. It happens behind closed doors and out in front. There's joy, there's laughter, and chaos. Lifelong friendships are forged. Love is found, moments cherished, and never forgotten. Life is a gift. And together, we are real family. Real friends. Real people. Experiencing real life. Kingdom Connection is a soul-winning ministry that is reaching the world through broadcasting, expansion into new church campuses, and global acts of compassion. By using the technology of today to fulfill the Great Commission, we are able to connect with countless people and reach hundreds of thousands of lives. Our broadcasts connect with people all around the world who say that the messages speak directly to them. Our ministry exists to help build a connection for strengthening your faith and living out your God-given purpose. And our missions and relief work helps connect you to desperate situations, showing the love of Christ through global acts of compassion. We feel that time is bright and God is leading us to grow. And that only happens when you partner with us through Connection Partnership. For as little as a dollar a day, you'll be helping us reach further than we ever have before. For more information on how you can be a part of the ministry and enjoy exclusive partner benefits, go online or call 888-339-0049 for more information. We can't do everything, but together we can do something amazing. At Kingdom Connection, we're excited to launch a brand new way to help the ministry through text to give It's convenient and a fast way to connect your gift support to us. And it's as easy as using your mobile device. To set it up, simply text any amount with the keyword KC to 45888. Hit send and you'll get a link to set up a payment method with your preferred debit or credit card. Don't worry, this won't be charged to your phone bill. And after a few quick steps, giving from your device is as simple as sending a text. For more information on how to set up your text to give today, visit our website at... Thank you for your generous support of Kingdom Connection. Each gift makes it possible for us to connect people to the message of Jesus, impacting lives here at home as well as around the world.
program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.